Hey, what's up drummers? Welcome back to Rooney Reacts. I'm a drum teacher based here in Auckland, New Zealand, reacting to some of the greatest drum videos of all time. Shout out on this one to Drum History Podcast, my man, Bart Van Der Zee. He got me hip to this one with his latest Instagram post, the James Gadsden uh, DVD. I think it's called R&B Funk Drumming DVD. Um, it looks like a fairly old instructional type thing and man it blew me away this is going to be uh, it's a probably going to be a fairly long episode because the clip is actually quite long and i want to start it where he started it because it was just so mind-blowing and there was just there was no fat to trim off it you got to kind of watch the whole thing if you're not familiar with james gadson just real quick he is an older gentleman um, but his he was kind of really active in the 60s, 70s, playing for people like the Jacksons, um, Diana Ross, um, James Brown, and Bill Withers. Um, and he is kind of just the man with that just unbelievable funk drumming sound. Let's get our coffee, our headphones, and we're going to get straight into it. Then we had kind of a Memphis type of Philadelphia with a tom-tom. You can feel, um... They foot. beat on the toms. And that came from... So they had a tom-tom. Snare stick backwards? I do that. Tom-tom, mmm. But mm, fatter. Gave it a Get little like more rain. Held it back a little bit. Get more jungle, more jungle-ish feeling in the way of speaking, but good dance, good feeling music, good dance music. Cross that river. That's Memphis. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. He's doing this live. Shout out to the band as well. Four to the bar on the bass drum. I never thought that that groove was four to the bar on the bass drum. One handed fill. Oh man. Yeah, that's that Carolina. Hit me, hit me, James <laughs> Brown type of thing. You know that. I feel like the Bernard Purdy uh, presentation. We call that the, we call that the cold sweat beat. You dance in so many different ways, you break out in a cold sweat. We call that the beat. That beat. And then that other one <laughs> had a kind of a shuffle thing in it, but it had a. You can feel the ah 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 Kind of a 12 8 type of, we call that the Carolina Shuffle. You know, on that East Coast, that Southeast Coast. That's where that came from. What is that James Brown song? Oh, damn. Oh, no. How can you just play like that? so hard to do. Play slow, play a ballad and make it feel like that. Let's go. 
Yeah. That right hand, man. Is that solid sixteenths or little? Now that was the Philadelphia sound, going northeast, what? going up that coast, more of a majestic type sound. Uh, I don't want to go I back say because this, this, this you know, is already going to be long. Very majestic, like the opera houses. And the minuets from the great composers, you would hear uh, operatic or uh, very classical type music on the top, and on the bottom you would hear maybe what we call uh, majestic type funk. Tip, tip, tip. All right, real quick. Interesting how his snare sound is so muted. So you saw the gaff tape, and on the left side of the snare. On that piece of gaff tape, they looked like there was something under it, probably tissue or something uh, that's really absorbent. Um, but the toms have got no muting on them. And he's even got clear heads underneath the toms. Let's keep it going. Tipped like they're tipping, and you hear the ah, uh, mm, ah, uh, mm, mm, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, um. But it would have a majestic time, and it would be tipping, you know, for that. And then they'd go all the way on the fast thing to the extreme. From there came four on the floor. Same thing, swinging, they're swinging. And they, and they might double up. Double up. So they went from one extreme to the other with their fast things, but you could still feel the groove in it. So that was called the disco type of beat there. Philadelphia style. All right. <laughs> Okay, keyboard is Pat, you're up here. We want you down here a bit. Hustle. I always thought those toms would have been overdone. That's the big city, the Big Apple. That's that New York funk for you. Slick on the top. Funk on the bottom, but sophisticated. Not as deep, not as gawky. Slick type funk, chic, chic they would call it. You know, the chic type thing, sophisticated. They had a, a maybe a more sophisticated strut in their funk for that type thing, you know. You know, a little lighter, but still very danceable and funky, but maybe a little sophistication. Just again, real quick, sorry. Really interesting how he's, I mean, he's a great song drummer. And getting hired for all those sessions, he's known as one of the most recorded drummers of all times, certainly in R&B and funk. And how he how he feels the music and how he's describing it um in a, like a really visual way and he's he's not just thinking notes and 
uh, two and four on the snare and sixteenths on the hi hat. He's he's actually thinking of the dynamics and the feel and trying to capture certain types of feels and errors. It's this is fascinating. And then you had. The hustle type thing. Still with a disco in it from the East Coast. But we added Tom Toms. Yeah. You have a you know a, you have a Latin people that live in New York too, so you have a different type of mixture. So you kinda have that Latin hustle type thing with the disco. You know, then you got that disco and then you got that up. Yeah, got a Loomis. We'll call it the New York Hustle. <laughs> what about that? All right. That's what it's called. Express yourself. That is just... You can't do that. It's doing this live. was the one that killed me. What is the BPM here? That is a fast one-handed 16th note groove. It's grimacing. Maybe feeling it. Start that one too fast. <laughs> sort of headhunters Herbie Hancock funk. stop it there I need to watch this entire thing um, I'll stop it I think that's around about where Bart stopped it on the drum history insta thing with the fast Barry White style one hand 16th groove which that is crazy I'm gonna I need to beat map that and find the tempo there that was that was lightning one just another really interesting thing for me with drummers like this who are massively respected within the industry and highly recorded or really sought after for recordings. The way he can just make himself invisible in the track. So there's nothing showy. There, there actually is showy stuff watching him because it's just incredible what he's achieving and the sound he's getting out of the drums. But there's nothing drum solo um, type stuff showy you know that wouldn't be at um, you know modern drummer festival or something you wouldn't sort of expect to see this kind of thing but I mean he wasn't hired for that was he he was hired to record tracks and um, help people sell millions of albums and it's it's this ability to to just slip into the track and get inside the track straight away from the get-go so he was sort of counting them off and, and then just going. 
And then it was just perfect instantly. It's just, just amazing. Uh, just before I stop the video, definitely check out this. James has been on a couple of podcasts. I'd definitely recommend Drummer's Resource episode with James Gadson. That's a fantastic one. And got a lot of insights off that. And he's just a very charismatic guy, obviously, and a lot of fun to listen to, uh, both speaking and playing the drums. Uh, and again, if you want me to react to some drumming that really, you know, appeals to you, let me know in the comment section and I'll try and get to it. And I'm really looking forward to watching more interesting stuff like those. Actually, I've, at this point, I feel like I can just go back through the Drum History podcast, their Insta posts and and just take those because kind of Bart's done like a greatest hits already, <laughs> I think, in the drum clips. And he's uncovered some real gems. So thanks for that, Bart. Um, but yeah, comment below with anything you want me to react to. All right, take it easy. See you next time.